Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by the Patient is an uplifting memoir penned by Norman Cousins, a prominent political journalist and activist. In the 1970s, Cousins faced a daunting medical diagnosis, ankylosing spondylitis, a crippling condition marked by severe inflammation in the spine, often leading to bedridden states. Adding to his burden, doctors informed him of a severe connective tissue ailment, sometimes referred to as collagen disease. This remarkable memoir chronicles Cousins' remarkable journey to recovery, a feat that carried a 1 in 500 chance, as outlined by medical specialists. His path to wellness unfolds through active participation in his own healthcare regimen, an exploration of brain biochemistry, and a steadfast commitment to a daily regimen of vitamin C and laughter. What makes this book profoundly significant is its pioneering exploration of the therapeutic advantages of involving patients in their treatment plans, embracing alternative therapies, and harnessing the mind's power to facilitate the healing of an ailing or injured body. The narrative commences with Cousin's sudden affliction, which struck him following a trip to Moscow in 1964. Upon his return, he initially dismissed a mild fever as a common cold or flu. However, as days passed, the fever intensified, leading to a more severe illness that severely limited the mobility of his arms, legs, neck, and spine. Bedridden and concerned, Cousins consulted a doctor who, after examining his inflammation markers, discovered alarming off-the-charts readings that worsened over time. Hospitalization became imperative, and Cousins found himself under close observation in an intensive care unit. The diagnosis, ankylosing spondylitis, a connective tissue ailment that, in his case, had debilitating consequences, rendering him nearly immobile and confined to his bed. The doctors delivered a grim prognosis, informing him that the chances of recovering from his ailment were as slim as 1 in 500. For someone who had once enjoyed robust health, this verdict was a harsh reckoning, signaling the likelihood of a life marred by severe physical disabilities. During his hospital stay, Cousins grew increasingly dubious about the care he was receiving. While his physician, Dr. William Hitzig, possessed remarkable skills and vitality, Cousins found the hospital environment itself to be detrimental to his well-being. The medical team postulated that his illness might be linked to heavy metal poisoning or exposure to atmospheric toxins, further heightening Cousins' skepticism about the hospital's therapeutic benefits. He perceived the facility as rife with germs, infections, and bacteria that could exacerbate his condition. In a candid conversation with Dr. Hitzig, Cousins expressed his apprehension about the prospect of recovery. Cousins' foremost concern, however, was the taxing toll that hospital life exacted on his mental and physical health. Rest eluded him, and the nutritional offerings, laden with additives, did little to appease his concerns. The emotional strain of the hospital environment loomed large. Guided by Dr. Hitzig, Cousins made a bold decision, he checked out of the hospital, secured a nearby hotel room, and embarked on a self-directed approach to his treatment. After delving into the realm of brain chemistry, Cousins became increasingly convinced of the therapeutic potential of laughter. He opted for high doses of vitamin C, adhered to a nourishing diet, and made it a daily ritual to indulge in at least one humorous movie. Astonishingly, albeit against the expectations of many medical professionals, Cousins began a gradual but remarkable journey toward recovery. Upon fully reclaiming his health, Cousins felt compelled to write his memoir as an inspiring testament encouraging other patients to contemplate their own needs and actively participate in their treatment. Anatomy of an Illness has earned its place as a celebrated exemplar of laughter therapy and the transformative potential of joy. Born in New Jersey in 1915, Norman Cousins, a political journalist and activist, entered the world of medical skepticism at the tender age of 11 when he was inaccurately diagnosed with tuberculosis and sent to a sanatorium. Cousins commenced his career with the New York Post in 1934, and his advocacy extended to the causes of nuclear disarmament and global peace. Following his own health diagnosis, he embarked on a journey of inquiry into brain chemistry and the profound interplay between one's attitude and well-being. Subsequently, Cousins assumed the role of an adjunct faculty member in psychiatry and behavioral science at the University of California, Los Angeles, further solidifying his legacy. Over the course of his lifetime, he authored an impressive array of more than a dozen books. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.